How does it feel? Soft? Um, <laughs> yeah, it feels soft. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how cows influence run and culture. Full disclaimer, even if I did a video of like an hour or two hours, I probably still wouldn't be able to touch on all the different ways in which cows are intertwined with Rwandan culture just because it's so many different ways so I'm not even gonna try to do that <laughs> I'd like I'm just not even gonna try in this video I'm just going to be focusing on some of the ways I'm just gonna be touching on a couple of the ways and then I'm gonna be focusing really on one way that I've always thought was fascinating and that I always wanted to learn more about if you see the title of this video you already know what it is if you want to go along on that journey with me welcome and if you find this interesting and you want to know more about the other ways in which Rwandan culture is influenced by cows, please go ahead and like this video and write a comment down below um, and let me know that you want more. The ideas are there. The facts are there. It's extensive, so we could go there. So, like Okay, so the first thing I want to focus on is dance. If you have been to a Rwandan wedding or a special event, you've seen this type of dancing. And when they do this move, see that? See that? Inyambo is a Rwandan traditional dance, danced by women. The dancer stretches their arms upward as if they are horns of the cattle with grace and beauty. And the name of the dance, Inyambo, that's the name of the horned cows that it's named after in Kinyaranda. So these, these are actually made from cow horns. So hot, so beautiful. There's so many different styles. I wish I had more footage here that I could put in to show you of the different um, cow horn jewelry and stuff but there's so many really good designs. Oh, hey, motions. So these um, geometric designs, the white and black geometric designs that are on featured on these clothes are influenced by a Rwandan art form called imigongo. Imigongo is made from a material that comes from cows. If you don't know what it's made out of, I want you to go ahead and just pause this video and guess what you think it's made out of and comment down below. A hint, a clue, here in Rwanda we are zero waste, okay? Zero waste. Imigongo is made from cow. Okay, so here we're gonna go a little bit in depth. I actually went to go and visit the Imigongo Art Center that is located in Kayonza. You can find the information here and we got all of the tea about Imigongo. So I'd been wanting to learn about Imigongo and the processing and the way that it's made for the longest. It's one of the first things that I learned about Rwandan art. The only thing that people could really tell you about it was that it dates back a long time and that is made out of cow dung. So I wanted to learn a little bit more about this ancient art form and kind of see how it's made. And so I decided that I would go to the art center in Kayonza to get a real tour. My name is Charles uh, Ashingwe. I'm the founder and director of the Migongo Art Center. It dates back around 200 years ago in 18th century. Uh, it was invented here in the Eastern province by some prince who was called Kachira. And it is said that he basically wanted to use some sticking substance of the cow dung to follow this passion around geometry and color to improve the interior of the houses he had. And so uh, I get to understand they were using white, uh, red, black, and gray because they'll get these colors naturally from either the soil or like burning something and it creates charcoal, which is black, or getting a white kind of like looking soil, or like a red looking soil and gray looking soil. So basically that's it, that's the history. That's where it comes from. There's an element of using everything around the cow, you know? 
They will use the horns, they will use the milk, the hairs, the meat, of course, the everything, and the dung as well. Uh, and you can see that dung was still used for composting. Um, the composting history is also existing. Could you tell us what are the steps, the method of making imigongo? Um, you begin by assembling your frame. You determine the size. For instance, this is a 20 centimeter by 30 centimeter frame. From there, you will use like charcoal like this and come up with the pattern you want. Uh, some of them represent something. For instance, some of the patterns that we looked at at the beginning, they're like a river or a thigh or a wing. And so you can see that when they created those ones, they're looking at a big bird and they would follow the pattern of the wing. Mm. And then they would create all of this, come up with a, with a geometry for that, and they create this three modeling, and they would create color for that, determining any colors they want. Uh, or they would say a thigh, like a human thigh in formal design, and basically kind of like come up with that design. And from there, what happens, in the morning you wake up, you put on your gitenje, and you, you pick this can, you go find the cow dung. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you bring in this can, and then you put it here, and you go to your neighbor and find some ash. Mm -hmm. And then you bring your ash, you power it into the filter here, mm -hmm. and you filter it to get all the rocks out. Yes, that's just quite enough. And you begin, you should begin shaking it. Yes, see, that's a perfect ash. Okay. Uh, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, that's probably enough. Um, so put that aside. Get a little bit of a scoop of your dunk. <laughs> or get you someone to help out that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right there. Add a little bit more. Yes, wait. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. All right. Add a little bit of glue, like a two big drops. Like oh. a long like a long drop. Perfect. Uh-huh. All right. And uh so you begin mixing all the three together. Like uh, how you make dough. Like kneading it? Yeah, it's like dough. <laughs> don't, don't compare it to dough, though, please. <laughs> it's not something I would want to eat bread made out of. So you keep mixing and mixing until it's very consistent. Doesn't this need more, more uh, ash? No, you keep, add, you keep mixing because it's not, I, I can see that it's not um, consistent yet. How does it feel? Soft? Um... <laughs> oh my goodness. This is taking a bit longer than I had thought it would. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> All right. So from there, I think you have it right. Mm -hmm. um, and so at that stage, it's why you go to your frame. Okay. And then you begin using your mixed uh, dung uh -huh. uh, to follow the pattern you, you draw. That's so you have it side. ready, it's over here. Mm -hmm. And then you. You can continue with your hands, you can wash them. Yes, that's please. that's up to you. You wanna wash them? <laughs> <laughs> so you have your your pattern drawn. Mm -hmm. So you can use your mix mm -hmm. to basically follow the lines you drew. Okay. You try to stay consistent and at the same level. Mm -hmm. So the tutorial Alina will be here in a, in a few seconds. Mm -hmm. And she, she basically, she will be doing it and you can see where you're getting it right or not right and you do it. So you see how she, she holds it. Mm -hmm. She's Lovely. like making a little bit of a snaily looking. Mm -hmm. So, but she get, she does this warm, warmy looking shape. Okay. Remember, these things were done permanently on walls. Um, they were basically on existing permanent surfaces. And what's been happening on the art is the evolution. We take it out of the permanent spaces which you can do even now, but also have it existing in movable forms on frames and sizes and shapes and all, all different kind of sizes you can come up with.
Is this found in Burundi? Is it found in Uganda? Is it found in Congo? Is it strictly a Rwandan thing? So from what we know so far, this art was invented here in the eastern province in a prefecture known as Kibungo or like uh, Gisaka at some point. But growing up, I could see that in some neighboring countries, especially with the people, the culture of cows, like in Western Uganda, a little bit of part of the, of the Tanzanian part, you could see that people had those kind of images, but most of them didn't have them exactly with three modeling. Mm. Some of them had them as just images and shapes, and some of them did have them with a little bit of geometry. But this is credited to movements of people uh, because our people have moved a lot around, uh, either by searching for pastures for their cows or some sort of uh, disaster, they're fleeing something. And so you could see that it's moved around a little bit in some African countries, but it's only here in Rwanda that this art has been invented. And it's only here in Rwanda that it exists in this kind of form. Following the pattern, slowly by slowly, until mm. you have it you properly are. done. Mm. And you are using the water here to smoothen it a little bit. Make sure it's all... It's all lined up, it's on, the, right. it's on the ridge, it's all like smooth and smooth and smooth. So this is, um, and from there, you have it ready, you let it dry outside. Basically, it's uh, air drying and sun drying. On a good day, sunny and windy, one day is enough. And then from there, you begin sanding. So create a very smooth surface. And during the sanding process, we add a little bit of paint, like primer paint, so that it can fill out more of the pores yeah. of, the, of the surface. Mm -hmm. And you smoothen again using sanding paper. We have made the first step of the imigongo uh, we put the we made the dough or the clay uh, and then we made our designs and everything Aline helped me a lot I'm not gonna lie um, and now we're moving on to painting so because that first part takes like a day to dry we're actually going to be painting some that have already been made so I'm still kind of following Aline's lead and we finna get a pop in it's clear that people love this art. Rwandans from the very local people of Kayonza, where we are based, from people from Kigali, from Rwandans who live abroad, people, visitors, foreigners who live here, they appreciate this. And you know why? It's because it's very authentic. It's not because it's such a, a complex kind of art, but it's so authentic. It's what belongs, it's, it's us. <laughs> look at hers and look at mine. Wow. Can you fix it? I suck. Creative energy flows all over the world. So it, it's not fair to ask, where did these guys get all this knowledge, you know? <laughs> because it it's exists in nature. If you're a human being, you can be creative. So I actually left my design there to dry. Have I picked it up? No, it's been so long and I have not gone to go pick it up. But if you guys want more um, parts in this cow series, I will definitely go pick up my design and I will let you know how it turned out in the end. But yeah, we didn't finish it that day. Come on, guys, 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 guys. I couldn't be there all day. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Eh, what do you mean, sir? Now that last one was a bonus one. If you understood what that meant, I want you to put that in the comments and let everyone else know what it means. If you liked this video, um, you can go ahead and uh, let me know if you want any other videos like this. And of course, subscribe if you want more content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you the next time. Bye.